Blog Talk Radio. Tonight we have uh, Jordan Hofer uh, coming on to um, discuss um, some of his theories on evolutionary ufology and um, also some of his upcoming projects as well. Um, and second up tonight, we actually have uh, the Archbishop Ron Bale from the Sacred Order of uh, St. Michael the Archangel coming on um, to discuss, um, yeah, just a lot of things... Um, demonic to talk about there and uh, his experiences over his um, his 30 years um, as, as a bishop so um, but before we get into that just um, for the second week running we have Taryn on here welcome to the show again Taryn hi <laughs> hopefully hopefully we have our technical issues behind now I hope so I hope so we can hear you yeah. very well, which is which is great, which is awesome. Um, how's your week been, anyway? It's been awesome, been awesome. How's yours been? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good, pretty bit too busy. Um, I, I just some some weeks, some weeks, um, I just wish there was more hours in the day than what there is, but that's just Absolutely. the way the cookie crumbles. But exactly. um, <laughs> Yeah, what we might actually do is we might actually get um, Jordan um, on the air. Jordan is um, an author and um, anthropology expert at uh, MUFON. He's um, actually um, written a couple of books, one on um, evolutionary ufology, and he's also written a fictional fictional novel called Saucerville, uh, which he has actually placed... Uh, stories of uh, real abduction stories in in, in amongst it. Um, so we'll discuss a bit of that tonight. And he's also got an upcoming project that we'll see where that's up to, and um, we'll discuss that one as well. So without without further ado, let's welcome Jordan to the show. Welcome to the show, Jordan. Hi, Brett. Taryn, Brett. Thanks for having me. Okay. Good to thanks have you for, here. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Um, I guess. How did you initially get into uh, ufology research in the first place? Well, pretty much what happened was a little thing called the recession. And okay. uh, I, I taught for seven years. I taught human evolution at uh, state universities here in Oregon. And I taught yeah. human evolution for seven years, and that was like, how I made my living. 
And then in 2009, the recession hit, and they cut me. And I think, you know, that's that's kind of how it began, was I was no longer in academia, and I actually okay. had the freedom to think about such things. Yeah, wow. um, being, being in academia, um, did that kind of make it difficult to sort of believe in UFOs as such? Impossible, yeah, impossible. My best friend had seen a very, very clear sighting of a, a very large black triangular craft, and I didn't even believe him. Here's my best friend of over 30 years, and I didn't believe him. And it was mm. only until I, I'd gotten out of academia that I realized, you know, good Lord, I'm so prejudiced on this subject, I couldn't even believe my best friend. Yeah, that's, what, that's, that's, that's how it began. Yeah, yeah, okay. So <laughs> it, it, it's wow. funny though, isn't it? Like, like the, the 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 possible fear of losing your career would will actually make you second guess mm-hmm. someone that you've known for thirty years. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's actually a, l- a little sad. I'm just glad that it's worked out the way it has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, but by the by the looks of it, you've come out. You, you've come out the other side now. Uh, oh, sure on, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, just um, do you know of anyone that actually has lost a career from actually getting into paranormal studies or doing that sort of stuff? I do. I do. When I was when I was a teacher of uh, physical anthropology, and that's basically just human evolution. Uh, yeah. One one of my all time heroes was a uh, uh, human evolutionist from I believe it was University of Washington, and his name was Grover Krantz, and he spent about five percent of his time using the tools of physical anthropology to study Bigfoot. So it was uh-huh. like a hobby. It was a hobby. Yeah. He was he he was he was well published. He had you know, some very interesting theories about Neanderthal and so forth. Uh, But all of that was squashed because of a hobby that took up 5% of his time. How sad. How how is that, you said? No, no, no. How how sad is that? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. He kind of got the last laugh in the end because uh, his bones and the bones of his... uh, a uh, very large, uh, I believe it's a, called a wolfhound, are now yeah. uh, on, on display in the Smithsonian. So good old Grover Krantz got the last laugh on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's well, that's good to hear. It's uh, it's always it's always nice to see that it wasn't all bad, you know. Um, no, not at losing, all. Was... Losing a career and actually, yeah, he actually end, end, ended up showing them. Which is a good thing. Um, so after um, the recession and stuff, and and this story from your friend, what actually led you to um, to start doing stuff for MUFON? Um, can you, just for anyone who doesn't know, can you explain what MUFON actually is? Sure, sure. It's MUFON is a worldwide uh, organization uh, for the scientific study of UFOs for the betterment of humanity. I believe that's actually their mission statement. Um, okay. And and that's basically what they want to do. They want to use uh, they want to at least use the tools of science to try yep. to understand the logistics of sightings as best as they possibly can. And I, I you know, I think they do a really good job with with uh the tools they've got and 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 how elusive these things are. Yeah, yeah. So how how soon after um, sort of you you realise that you're out of academia? Did you did you start working for MUFON? And on what level were you working for them? Yeah. Okay. Um, it was it was it was very very soon. After I had been okay. laid off, actually, um, one of the reasons for that was because my daughter actually saw a UFO 
right before I was laid off. So oh. that, that 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 coincided as well. And yeah. my daughter my daughter is not one to fib and she wasn't five years ago when she saw that thing. Right. So you know, she saw some kind of weird very bright rectangular object you know, outside her window. Yeah. And uh yeah, yeah, as far as MUFON could tell it was uh, you know, an unknown. They weren't able to identify it. Mm, so, mm. Yeah, my daughter yeah, pushed okay. me a lot on it too. Oh, does she? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> keeps you in line keeps you in line on the study, hey? Yeah, absolutely she does, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, I have a daughter myself and uh yeah, I know how I know I know how pushy daughters can get. Let me tell you right now. Um, <laughs> I can seriously say that my daughter is the reason I quit smoking because I got so damn sick of her telling me every second day, "Daddy, you have to stop." And if ever I was lighting up a cigarette, she'd be telling me off. I got so sick of it, I gave up. <laughs> that's, just the, that's just the way she is. So I'm very, very, very. Pushy daughters, daughters can be, and uh, very, very persistent on top of that too. Absolutely. I guess, I guess my biggest question that when I was um, looking through all your all your stuff and reading up on it, as a as an evolutionist, how how did that fit in with ufology? Oh, okay, yeah, that's a great question. You know, what I, I think. I think for me what it was, I mean, I, I admit full on in the book that it's a thought experiment. That, yep. that, you know, scientifically, using the scientific method, you're not going to get anything more really than a hypothesis, if you're yep. lucky. You know, something that you can either prove, that that you can either support or deny with, with data, right? Yeah. And... Uh, what a lot of people call theories, they're not really scientific theories at all. They're really more hypotheses. And that's that's what I realized that book was going to be. But I said, yeah. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it. I said, nobody has ever attempted a hypothetical retelling of the evolution of the greys from yeah. their home planet to here. And I, I said, to heck with it. I'm going to give it a shot, you know. Carl Sagan did that with his uh, Jupiter aliens in, in Cosmos. And I figured, yeah. you know, what the heck? I, I, I used to teach. I, I think I can do this. And yeah, so yeah. Uh, it, it, one, one thing about it is uh, I hope that people don't read it and take it too seriously, though, because there's a lot of stuff in there that I put in there, you know, to be funny on purpose. You know, I yeah. I think that sometimes ufology gets a little uh, uh, too serious and forgets to laugh. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I I actually have kind of noticed that myself when I have spoken <laughs> to ufologists to come on the show and stuff. Some of them are yeah, I'll just say this: some of them some of them are very very serious. Um, you can get quite cranky. Would you would you say? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm, I'm. I'm trying. I'm trying to be a bit political about it, but yes. Yes. Okay, pretty much. Well, we're not. We're not naming names here. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, no. And um, some of them bite. No. <laughs> But um, I will say too, like if, if anybody's listening in and, and does and does have any questions, the number's there to call in. Uh, please feel free um, to call in tonight as well. Um, I, ho- I hope you don't mind that, Jordan. I actually haven't asked you yet on that one, but I hope you don't mind people ringing and asking questions. Absolutely not. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> Excellent. So when you actually started out working on 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 some theories and stuff, like what was the application of it and, and what sort of theories did you develop? Um, okay, one one of the implications was that, you know how, okay, gravity works the same way here as it does 
uh, you know, like, I don't know, a thousand galaxies over or okay. whatever. There, there are certain immutable laws of the universe. And yep. it turns out, and Darwin knew this, that, that, that evolution by natural selection is one of those natural laws. Yeah. Therefore, if things on Earth evolve by the mechanism of, of natural selection, you can expect that same thing to happen, as I was saying in my book, you know, hypothetically 39 light years away, where yeah. you know supposedly the graves are from and all this. Um, mm. and, 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 and you can apply the same rules, because those, those are going to be, like I said, like gravity. Uh, natural selection yeah. will work on an alien planet, just as certain as it works here. And so I just kind of played with it from there and tried to imagine what kind of a creature could do the things that greys do. What would explain their uh, their anatomy, their very large eyes, their very large heads, so forth and so on. And I've, I've, I've done so much teaching in evolution that I could just, you know, shuffle this like a deck of cards. And I always kind of had, a, you know, a... a as a running theme going through it, almost like, yeah. you know, what, what would it be like if Darwin had encountered yeah. aliens? What, what would he have thought? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Um, is there any kind of, um, I guess, like, over the description of a grey, because um, you've studied a lot of the abductee stories too, Um yeah. Is it a common description over all the um, abductees, or, 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 do, or do, the, do some of the descriptions differ? I'm just trying to work on, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Species well, of them, know, or what? I, the, the, they're all similar, and and, and uh, most of them differ. So, okay. Which, which shouldn't be too... Again, which shouldn't be too uh, surprising, because... You know, you look at any population of critters, whether it's, you know, dogs or humans or whatever, and you're going to see this variation. So I imagine yeah. we'd see variation within greys, too. That, yeah. That would be yeah. my answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> when you've read all the... Like, like, I've looked at a lot of abductee stories myself, and, I mean, I really have a lot of issue with um, the abductee ones that seem to come out and say, well, you know, they came to me and they told me, you know, this is what we have to have to do to make our world um, a better place. Like, and, and although I, re- I really struggle with those sorts of abductee stories. Like, of the abductee stories that you studied, um, did you, what ones did you kind of find uh, the most believable? Yeah, I, I well, I tend to agree with you. Yeah, um, I think maybe some people have have maybe been lucky and had a good experience or something, but I doubt it. I I, I agree with um, uh, author Carla Turner. She pretty much had it. I mean, she was an, a long time abductee, and yeah. she was she was peeved off, man. She was sick of it, and. Uh, you know, from her stories, also um, uh, my, my dear friend Karina Sables up in Victoria, B.C. She she's been plagued by these little gray bastards for for years, and I mean they're horrible. They do horrible things to her. You know, she, yeah. she and other, other people in her family have been raped by these little bastards. Yeah. And, and so that's that's kind of my my take on it. I think that they're just like. You know, nasty little bastards. Yeah, who really that is the title of your next project too, isn't it? It is. <laughs> <laughs> I like the title, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to clarify that he, he's not Jordan's not swearing on radio just for the fun of it. <laughs> no, no, absolutely, I'm not. This is, it, it's not swearing. This is uh, 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 reporting, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, 
thought of these things are mongrels. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so have you have, have you had the go ahead now for for, for this uh, third project? I I yeah I have actually, um, and my co-author and I, uh, D- David Barker. He's he's been writing about UFOs for uh, since 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 the early eighties. And yep. uh, even uh, even before then, and and uh, he's, he's he's a real close family friend, and I've wanted to write with him for years, and so we've got finally got our chance to do this together, you know, a couple old buddies, yep. and uh, we're yeah we're actually more than halfway through. I mean, it's he, I, I would say this about the book, on, honestly, if people have read my stuff and they don't like it, okay, fine, that's cool, but this book. Little 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 gray bastards, you know. Get it for David Barker's stuff because his stuff is gold. The 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 stories that he was able to retrieve from uh, some of the the uh, inter- interviewees is just a, astonishing. I mean, some of them are just like the most astonishing I've I've, I've read in ufology for a long time. Huh. He's he's he's, he's a, an incredible author. Yeah, I just uh, I'm just I'm just thinking about how much I really like that title. <laughs> I, I like it too. It's very awesome. <laughs> it's so cool because I mean, I mean, when you when you look at all these stories, like everyone's talking about, oh, these these, these aliens apparently friendly are coming down, telling us how to better ourselves, but in reality, like. If they were friendly, they wouldn't be abducting people. No, they wouldn't, would they? Oh, and they no. wouldn't be doing it again and again and again. I mean, yeah. the the common explanation for that is that there's some kind of reproductive experiment going on. But, but we have to, at some point, rationally ask, my Lord, how many sex cells do they really need? I mean... <laughs> Leave people but alone that's, and rob us. That's the other biggest for God's question. Sake. It's just like, <laughs> Are they even <laughs> sexually compatible with us? <laughs> I, from, are, you know are, what I mean? Are they sexually compatible with, with human beings? Yeah. Well, okay, okay, so this is what I've read, all right? So don't shoot the messenger, but it's like, okay, so... <laughs> Some of the <laughs> some of the reproductive experiments that they do, they've got hybrids that are closer yep. to humans than than the you know they've already, they've already been hybridized, and so sometimes okay. they'll set up little liaisons with them. Um, <laughs> but most, <laughs> mostly, mostly they do it the rude way. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I don't even need to say yeah. anything further. <laughs> those but those bastards. Um <laughs> they are. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean I just there's no explanation for that much. So what do you think is their actual motivation? I actually think that uh uh and and this isn't my quote, this is from I Ivan T. Sanderson who wrote a book called Invisible Residence. He was uh he was a friend of Ian Fleming's, I believe. Who wrote, who wrote James Bond? Anyway, um, yeah, this guy, uh, um, um, he, he basically thought that aliens were stupid and insane. Okay. And at first I was like, well, what does that mean? And then I started to think about it, and I was like, you know, you really can be technologically advanced and stupid and insane at the same time. I mean, we can <laughs> <laughs> they kind of are examples of that around today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> oh wow. Give us some. <laughs> some examples of, of, of what? I have to. Yeah, yeah, I have to really say that um, the um, the reality of of all this is 
I mean, how many abductions have there been over all the years that oh, these UFOs have been appearing? Yeah, okay. I mean, that's oh, geez, that's a great that's a great question. Now, I, I I I worked on the book a bit. I was also um, inspired by uh, the guy who wrote the forward, uh, Butch Witkowski. He's uh, he's fantastic. Okay. He, he have you heard about him? Pardon? He's, he's, have, have you have you heard of Butch Witkowski? Yes, I have. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, just for your listeners who might not know, he was a homicide police uh, detective, and he's retired now. And he studies; he has studied re- most recently uh, human mutilations. Okay. And uh, there's 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 another perfect example of you know they're they're not friendly, you know. They're, and but you say uh, human mutilations. What's that? <laughs> You say I human believe, mutilations. I believe that is what he said. Yes. Yeah, human yeah. mutilation. Yeah, yeah. And, and okay. It's, it's it's identical. It's identical to uh, the cattle mutilations. It's it's done in the same way. Okay. Horrible. Yeah, it is. And 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 uh, according to Butch, they keep you alive and awake for the whole thing. And oh. uh, basically, what he said is. Someone asked him, well, what should I do if I see a UFO? And he said, run like hell. And yeah. <laughs> you know, so after, after I heard Butch, too, that kind of cemented it for me. I'm just like, you know, these are nasty little little devils, man, you know. Oh, wow. I was thinking I would even need to ask that. If you see a UFO, just run. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, you know, I'd say people would stop their car and get out a welcome sign. Well, yeah, like, tra- like Travis Walton, you know, just like walk right up to it. And, well, he learned the hard way, didn't he? I mean, well, there's so many comments that just come to mind there, but I don't think any of them are appropriate for radio. Um, <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm thinking ignorance is stupid, just stupid bliss. <laughs> That's the yeah, end. Look, look, I'm... I'm if I see aliens coming, I'm going the other way too. Like, I'm not holding out no uh, welcome sign because, I mean, if these abduction stories are true, I don't want that. I don't want to be the next one, that's for sure. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, there's no fun in that. Like, I mean, I think the scariest part of all the abduction stories is there's actually been... A hell of a lot of abductees that haven't returned, right? That's correct. Yeah. That's that's. Is that's this part of the hybrid stories? Mm-hmm. So, so may I ask, how do we know that they're abductees if they haven't returned? Just out of curiosity. Well, that's logic, and. <laughs> 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 I just thought I would throw that in there, you know. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I, 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 I guess, I guess you could question the link of they just disappeared, or whether an alien took them, and or whatever. I mean, um, <laughs> if someone yeah, actually I mean, saw an yeah. alien take them away and they didn't return, then then you'd have to wonder what's going on there. You know, like why are they keeping us? Right, yeah, right, right. That's a good question, and and, uh, and and Butch had come up with a number of people who have been abducted and never returned, and, and, and yeah, yeah, we can definitely ask that question. Well, how do we know that, you know, if we've never heard, and yeah, that logical question. Um, but but still, I mean, okay, if we if we just like throw out a ballpark number, that you know, say 1961. Uh, that yeah. was the first ma- major uh, uh, abduction case with Bar- Barney and Betty Hill. So if you just like look back to then, and then like take the number of people who are, you know, gone missing and never return, and it doesn't look like it has anything to do with murder or anything like that. I think that's what Butch was talking about. You know, he had narrowed it down pretty much. But I did a quick calculation. And it came out to something like 182 million people 
since 1961. Wow. Wow. And, okay, let, let's just say that that, that that number has any validity at all. If it does, that's an awful lot of people. And that's, that sounds more to me, you know, not not like a, a, a an experiment anymore. That sounds to me like some kind of weird con, conscription program. Something. Wow. You know, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a massive number. It is. It's massive. It's, That's it's, a very it's massive to... number. Wow. <laughs> and, yeah, that leads to a lot more questions, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> um, you yeah, could populate but... a whole other world with that many people. Yeah, That's I mean, where are they going? I mean, what, you know, what are the... <sighs> Are they being used by the Greys for something, or or is this just a is this a you know an, an imaginary number we've come up with, or I don't know, I don't know. But yeah, uh, it's been yeah. a lot of it's been a lot of people. It's most certainly a very very interesting theory on it. I mean, I've got to ask this. I seem to be asking a lot of the UFO people this because there's so many different theories going around. Um. Like there's the hollow earth theory of aliens. What do you think of that one? Well, you know, okay, this is actually this is kind of embarrassing. I I I have like degrees in biology and stuff and like I said I've studied Darwin, but I never studied geology. So okay. I I just I just simply I I've heard about the idea of hollow earth and so forth, but I just I have no opinion on it because I don't uh, yeah I don't I don't feel like I, I have the understanding to give an opinion. Yeah, no, I just I, I just thought I'd ask because um, yeah, like I've got so many questions on like on like the fact that these that these abductees are getting taken, they're having semen removed and whatever other god-awful things that these things are doing to these people, um, when if if they are from millions of light years away and there is no compatibility there, why are they doing it? And, I mean, I think maybe that's where the link with the people that have never returned come in. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with you. And, and if it really is some form of conscription... And then that kind of does just by the word it does kind of imply an idea of you know some kind of 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 larger battle out there and then we have to start kind of thinking is thinking of the at least the galaxy as a a, a larger ecology and yeah. there are some critters out there that are just you know they're apex predators they're the they're the lions of the galactic serengeti you know, I, I, it was uh, uh, Stephen Hawking was the one who said, you know, maybe we should, you know, stop sending out radio signals because we might attract one of these, you know, what I've called galactic apex predators, yeah. and might be might be kind of awful if they show up, and that's I, I think that's that's what we're looking at here. I think that's what we're looking. Well, you know that. What's that? That's a pretty scary thought because if they're that if they're that more technical technologically advanced than us, oh yeah, it's going to be a war of attrition if it does happen, isn't it? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, they. I I I, I think I think they've uh, you know they they've got us. They've had us. They've got us. Hmm. Because I think um, like. In the scheme of things, like if you look at, if there is, yeah, I'm just going to use your term, if they're the little grey bastards, <laughs> you know, I, I, I yeah. have to look at our own species and say we're a pretty violent species too. Yeah. So yeah, would you, would you say that they're just another version of us, essentially? Well, you know, I mean, it's 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 temp it's tempting to do that, isn't it? Because I mean, they do appear to have, 
you know, two arms, two legs, a head, eyes, some kind of slit for a mouth. But I think that it's yeah. kind of, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure, though. It's never been questioned before whether or not they actually walk on two legs. It, there's, there's always been, you know, talk of, of, of grays as more kind of floating, you know, the ability to, to levitate, um, and, 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 and the idea that their body is, is really small in proportion to the head. And hmm. uh, yeah, so uh, I'm not sure exactly what my point was. Oh yeah, actually, actually, yeah. they're kind of like um, they're kind of like the like if you could take an ultimate version of us and just turn us into this weird larval thing with an enormous head. You know, yeah. <laughs> I suppose that's <laughs> kind of that's what we look a, like. That's a thing, right? Apparently they've got mouths, but they speak to you telepathically. Right, exactly, and they've never, they've never. So why do they need a the damn mouth? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, an yeah. extra tool to. I was going to say something, but I'll keep it to myself. Well, no, actually, actually, I think what you're going to say uh, um, is, 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 it's, it's, it's in zoology, it's called mouth brooding. And that that's that's an, that's an, that's entirely possible that the males have this like you know little mouth flap, and that that's where yeah. the females put the fertilized eggs of the little greys, you know. I mean, <laughs> oh, okay, that's yeah. the right way to put it. Yeah, that's, you don't realize the amount of thoughts I got running through my head right now, but this is um. <laughs> I mean, it just shows. It just shows how I am. I, I mean, all, all I'm thinking about is little grey bastards now. <laughs> Which is funny. I really, really love that. I really, really love that term. I, I, I have to really say it. Um, <laughs> someone actually like asked me a message through through Facebook actually because the chat site doesn't seem to be working at the moment. Um, so I've told everyone just to message me through Facebook if they've got questions because people didn't listen to me and I said if you got questions ring in, but uh, that's all right. <coughs> people like the lazy option. Um, there is a theory out there that um, aliens are demons. I have heard this theory and I don't prescribe to it, but what do you think about that? That aliens are what? Demons. Demons. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm hearing that correctly. Okay. Sorry, what was that? Um, well, you know, I okay. The 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 book I'm working on right now. I'm working on a chapter uh, okay. that, that's that's kind of about that. And well, you know, I my answer to it is, I guess it depends on who you ask. Um. If you ask the Mormons, they very quickly and emphatically say, no, they're not demons. Yeah. Um, I know of at least one ex extremely conservative uh, Catholic, and he believes that they truly are demons, that uh, the UFOs are meant to, to trick us and so forth. Um, but you know, I and that's just that's just like a couple, you know, examples in, in Christianity. I mean, I don't know how a lot of other religions feel about it either. I, it, but uh, uh, yeah, there's there's two perspectives there. Yeah, yeah. Taryn, I can't. Taryn, you don't message me on Facebook. If you're gonna say it, say it out here on the radio. <laughs> I don't want to make comments like that. Like say it out here on the radio, Taryn. Taryn's having bad thoughts about those grey bastards. <laughs> yes, I am. I can think Taren's about it. Taryn's just saying they've got mouths like that. They must be good for blowjobs. <laughs> Taryn! This is... This is this is a family show. Well, not tonight, anyway. <laughs> this is getting to the point where I needed to put a warning on this show. 
I, I guess so, but but I mean, like, who would they who would they be for? Because the the, the grades don't have any junk, man. What do they need semen? Oh, oh Lord. You got me. I mean, like I said, like if you need that many, just rob a sperm bank and leave men alone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my no. God. This is just going down a. This is just going down a road I wasn't expecting. Then. Um, <laughs> yeah. Nothing like losing your train of your thought. Thanks, Taryn. You could have just You're said welcome. on that you didn't have to message me on Facebook. Uh, well, I didn't want to just say it out loud. But she says this is a family show. <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah, I can't help myself. When you message me something like that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call you out on it, Darren. <laughs> I don't <blame> <laughs> I, I just lost my whole train of thought when you messaged me that. <laughs> I've just been sitting here thinking this whole time. I couldn't think of anything else after we were talking yeah. about that. My- I think that's I think that's that's hilarious actually, but um, I went off into yeah. left field on that one. I, think I probably would have been the same reaction if you had said it on air, and I probably would have lost my entire train of thought there too. But, <laughs> but that's all right. We'll we'll keep running with it. Um, <laughs> I just want to have a quick chat about about Saucerville. Um I mean, when did you come up with the idea to start Saucerville? Because was it. Is it the first one you wrote, or did you write that after your um, evolutionary ufology book? Uh, I was kind of writing them both at the same time, madly. And, uh, yeah, the, the Saucerville was the first project that I worked on. And it went through a couple iterations until finally I got it right, you know, into a position where I could publish it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, and, and 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 you wrote that as it's actually part of a trilogy, so you're still working on the other ones. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. I'm about a little over sixty percent done with the sequel, and uh, it's coming along. I think I think it's better than the first one, but you know, hey, I don't know. I think I know yeah. what I'm doing a little better this time around. But yeah, uh, well, can you tell everyone about like like? Oh, I guess I guess how, how how the book's set up, you know, like how, where it's set sure. and um, and the main character and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it takes place in uh, McMinnville, Oregon, which is, it's only that's only about 20 miles from where I live, and yep. uh, the place is also known as Saucerville because back in uh, I believe it was 1950. Uh, Paul, Paul and Evelyn Trent, a couple of you know, far, farming folk, uh, they were outside and they they saw this this flying saucer moving over their uh, over their field. And you know you can Google this real easy. Just uh, Google Trent UFO, and they're they're two of the most famous pictures taken of, of UFOs. Uh, the okay. Trents were. Yeah, the Trent, the Trents were really, you know, very, very honest people and so forth. And and uh, as far as I know, those pictures have never been debunked. So that's kind of how the the tr- trilogy begins. It begins with that actual uh, historical occurrence, and then it and then it weaves my story into it. And then it's kind of like, okay, cut fifty years later, and you get to meet these kids who are quite quirky. Uh, yeah, they're, they're yeah they're 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 kind of like I I, I guess I guess the shorthand uh, introduction to this would be kind of like Harry Potter UFO only you know, okay, yeah. you know only this has like you know really bizarre and scary experiments on uh, on board alien craft and I mean yeah. I it, it, it really is a, a a horror, a, a horror novel. Well, it really kind of is in parts. the the first The first half is almost comical at, in in points, and then okay. yeah, then the second the second half it really does kind of turn into uh, uh, communion for kids. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and and 
And the, and the second book, it has to deal with the, the military-industrial complex and, uh, you know, the whole question of what's more human, like an alien or, you know, someone who can just wipe out an entire Afghan village and, you know, feel happy about it. And so the second book is extremely subversive. Yeah. And then and then the third book is just, uh, okay, I've taken you through a lot of hell, so we're just going to have a fun time kind of book. That's that's the plan. Hmm. Yeah, well, I, mean, I think it's a, an, an amazing thing to do it with actual, with actual real abductee stories mixed through. Yeah, that's what's fun because... You know, I can name things throughout the book. And, you know, if kids are reading it and they want to know more about it, they can just Google stuff that's that's in the, right there in the book. And yeah. that's the idea that, you know, with Harry Potter, you close those books, you put them on the shelf, Hogwarts goes away, it goes on the shelf. But with these books, you, you close them, you put them on the shelf, and all you got to do is go out on, on a summer night and look up at the stars and try to see a UFO. You see, it's like it, it, it's it's almost like the 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 idea was, uh, you know, take 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 this with you and think about it. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, Yasmin. One of my one of my friends on Facebook actually sent me a picture of a of a scantily clad alien <laughs> lying. <laughs> what? Lying down on on velvety material with a sultry look on her face. (laughs) 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 Oh, my God. (laughs) That's quite quite funny, actually. So, um, with with the little grey bastards... um, book that you're working on now. How how far is that off completion? Uh we're about we're uh, over halfway done. And over halfway there? We're over halfway And what sort there. of things can people expect in, 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 in that book? Okay, the, the, they can expect a, a total one eighty from evolutionary ufology. I I don't I don't dink around and say, Oh well this is just a hypothesis or I don't talk about that at all. I just get right into the, right into the stories, and yeah. uh, you know, I I, I, I uh-huh. had correspondence with with two abductees, and I kind of let them tell their stories through me. Um, yeah. My my co-author David has just like the just this huge bucket of of high strangeness of stories yeah. that this. That this that this man lived through through his life. I mean, it's just amazing. He like uh, you know interviewed this guy, and 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 it's a very very long chapter, but it's well worth it because all the weird stuff that this guy reports having happened to him is just it's solid gold. I mean, I, I, yeah. I feel so lucky to be working with David because he's 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 fairly well known in the in the uh, the horror. Genre specifically the you know H.P. Lovecraft, um, and so he's just he's just a blast to work with. So and 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 I think it's really going to come out in the book. I think when people read the book, they're going to be able to tell that two old friends did this together and had a great time. And I think that that attitude will help the book be very interesting and uh, enticing. And then there's the title. <coughs> Yes, and the title. Yes, you gotta love that title. Like that that is the most unique title ever. Little grey bastards. Um <laughs> I really yeah, I, I really went when I when I was reading up on you and I read that and I I, I saw that title, I went, Wow, that's that's really catchy and just on the title alone people need to buy it. No, I need to- <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brad. That's but, really um, what, what would you say of, of all the abductee stories that, that you've that you've sent, that you've um, read or heard? What would you say is the most horrific one? Oh Lord. Oh okay, okay. That's boy. 
so I probably put you on well, the spot with that one. Yeah, yeah. No, well, no, it's no problem. Um, you know, to be completely honest, and and you know, it's it's kind of weird, a guy who's in ufology admitting this, but I mean, I mean, and this is just the first thing that's coming to mind, mind you, but yeah. I never, I never was able to finish reading Whitley, Whitley Strieber's Communion. I couldn't do it. Yeah. It, it, it upset me so bad. I think I got to page like, I don't know, 112 or something, and it was, it was freaking me out so bad. I just, I, I had to stop reading it. Oh. So, so I don't know if I'd say that, or. Boy, they sure put Carla Turner under some hell. I mean. It, what what they seem to do to the women especially. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. They probe the men and all that. But the women yeah. really get the reproductive runaround, man. I mean, they get, like, you know, impregnated. Their fetuses get taken away. You know, I mean, it's just... And, 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 and with them, it happens, like, say it happens to the grandmother. It'll probably happen to, the, to, to, her, to her daughter, to the mother, and to her daughter, the, you know, the... Well, it's probably his family line. Wow, yeah, exactly. like we don't get screwed on now. earth enough. <laughs> yeah. Right. We've actually, we've actually had a had a call come through here on um on there. So um area code three three seven, do you have a uh, question for Jordan? Yes I do. Hey guys, how are y'all? Hi, Good, how are you? Fine, how are you doing? I, I'm doing great. I actually have a this is going to kind of be a weird question. I, I just started tuning in to the show, actually, and I'm sorry I'm late. So um, I watched something on YouTube a while back uh, about a phone call to a radio station. I'm not sure what station or anything. And this guy kind of was supposedly calling from Area 51. He sounded very upset. He was you know, claiming different things of what's really going on and that we should all be taking shelter and the government is is kind of being taken over. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but... Yeah, did I you, am. You do? Oh, you've heard it. Okay, so... I did is, hear it, yeah. Is that a legitimate thing? I mean, did you do research on this to, to see if this was like a legitimate claim or a hoax or a... Yeah, I never... After after I listened to it, I never looked into it. I mean, I I, I thought that the person sounded uh, genuinely hysterical. Me too. Now, whether Me that too. whether that meant he was really afraid and it was true, that's one end. But he very well just simply could have been someone who was hysterical. And wasn't there something strange like 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 the radio station lost power or something? Yes, they did, and I, I just thought that was interesting because, you know, yeah. I've read a lot of comments on it, and they actually, uh, you know, of course you have those people that were, oh, this is fake, and this is whatever, this is part of a tool song. Well, no, you know, really people say that on YouTube? <laughs> yes, they did. Well, actually the tool song, to be honest, came out not long after this did. So I think the yeah. tool song, uh, you know, they used that to create a song. I mean that that's all honesty, but I was just curious if, if you had any further information because I've never heard anything else about it, and it, I guess it's one of those things that kind of just freaked me out because you don't, you know, you don't hear anything else like you know this was a hoax or this was true or whatever, and I don't even know the radio station to know the legitimacy of you know this kind of claim. Uh, yeah, and I I haven't done. Any further research into that? Um, having, having having heard it, though, I, I I'm not saying it it didn't happen. What I am saying is that I I've noticed this in ufology, and I, and I don't I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I think it's an extension of imagination. But sometimes Thanks. in ufology, there will be. Uh, you know, hoaxes that happen now and then. Yeah. Right, right. But this was and, a long you know, time ago. I think it's good to keep keep everybody on their toes, but it's also part of the the 
the fun part of ufology, in my opinion, which which I would call the you know more of an ecstatic truth. Just a it, it's not it's not the 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 everyday numbers that you're keeping tally of. It's more of a general. This is what it kind of feels like to be part of ufology. You know, I don't yeah. know if they did that or not. I don't know if they <laughs> see it that way or not. But uh, you, you mentioned know. also, Jordan. You mentioned communion. Yeah. I didn't read the book. I was uh, too scared because I actually watched the movie. Yeah. And so I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if I want to read the book because the, book the movie scared me so bad. It's all part of the little gray bastard phenomena. <laughs> wow. I mean, really though, I, I the the movie scared the crap out of me, and so uh, yeah. You know, right there, I was like, I, I don't think I want to look into aliens. <laughs> you know, I think I'm, I think I'm done on this part. But also the fourth sign, the fourth. Time, I know y'all laugh, but whatever. The no, fourth no, time, I'm not laughing at you. I'm not no, laughing at you. I, I've gone down no, the rabbit was, hole. I'm. Dude, I was scared. I was literally. Look, I was scared. I was watching the movie through a crocheted blanket. Okay, so I was like terrified of aliens. <laughs> And I thought they're about to abduct me because I watched the movie. They're going to abduct me out of my bedroom. And so it's just crazy how your mind goes. But oh, it fourth, is. No, I hate it. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, go well, ahead. I was just going to say about communion. I mean, you know, it's like, oh, geez, there's that scene where Christopher Walken's in his bed, you know, and you can see, like, just half of the alien's face peeking out behind the dresser. Dude, that's, and that's freaky that's, that's stuff. Scary okay. as hell. <laughs> that's scary as hell. That's, that's wrong. Wrong. What it is wrong. about monsters Holy. under their bed. Now we've got aliens behind the dresser. You're like, like, oh, you have to You're like, like okay, a whole this... new, a whole new world of nightmares now. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Because you're like, okay, I just watched the show that signaled them because they have satellite out there. And so now they're going to be zoning in on me, and they're going to come get me. So I'm done. You know? Stop running. Stop running now. In my bed and look, let me go lay in my bed and stare at my closet for a little bit. <laughs> well, that's the problem. That's the problem right there. That. We've got things in the closet that are scaring the crap out of our kids. We've got things under the bed that are scaring the crap out of our kids. And now we've got bloody aliens behind the dresses. <laughs> I'm well, not going to be safe, safe left in the damn house at this rate. I was like, I'm going to punch out a curtain, you know? Like, <laughs> oh, there's a guy that's running behind those with their lives, you know? They're waiting behind their shower curtains. You can't go anywhere in your house. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, your your safe haven was your parents' bedroom, so I was literally about to go and sleep in there because, you know, the aliens aren't going to get me in there for some weird reason, but, you know, <laughs> I'm screwed if I'm in my bed by myself, you know. And, and Lord, bid, don't hit, lay, lay a limb off the, the side because it'll come get you, you know. <laughs> I know, you don't lay the limb out of That's when the ghost drags you down the hallway. <laughs> and you know I had a long hallway too, so it was like a long jump by the time I look I I literally floated or flew. I don't know. I did something down that hallway and it was in my parents' bed because that was that's it. Didn't watch communion. You know what's weird is you, you y'all are on this show but fire in the sky was on last night, and I just thought that was kind of cool because that's an interesting story. Also, did yeah. you, oh, did yeah. Jordan? I've, did you look into that one too? Oh, for sure. Yeah, no, I, I have. I've I've read a book about about that uh, that affair and about Travis Walton, and he actually he actually came here to Oregon about oh, what was it about two two years ago. There every every year we have in McMinnville we have a uh, UFO festival for the 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 Trent sighting. And it's really right. cool because we get we get a lot of uh, uh, you know really really kind of interesting ufology folks. Uh, uh, last right. year we had we had Nick Pope. If you've heard of him, he was uh, yes yeah yes yeah um, yeah. It was, it was really good to meet him, especially because I 
I was able to ask him to uh, if if he'd look at my book. So you know, that was great. He, he's a really nice guy. You know, there, that's one thing. That's another thing I've kind of noticed. <clears throat> I mean, this is true anywhere with any group of people. But you know, <clears throat> they start to say something. You know, and they'll be like, "Oh, I don't know about so and so." You know, it's like, "Oh, come on." You know, are you really going to bring <laughs> that in here? Right, right. Oh, but what was your theory on his seeing humans and where he was taken? Oh, or even like things in in that story. Sure, sure. I mean, I you don't know. I mean, I don't. I I don't know. Maybe he. Maybe they really were. Maybe they were uh, under some kind of. Mind control. I I don't know. Maybe mm-hmm. there maybe there were screen images that that the Greys were using to, you know, calm them down. You know, I I know, I know I'm a lot more calm when I see, you know, human beings than 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 Greys. So right, I, right. I I don't know. I mean, these are just some guesses. I I I really don't have an explanation for that. The only the only one that I get kind of exasperated with is when people talk about like. The uh, the tall whites and and so forth. Uh, have you heard about them? No. I uh, are you asking me or Brett? <laughs> I don't know. I've kind of. Well, you you and Brett. No, me. I've never heard of them. No, just the Grays. Brett, you ever hear of the tall whites? And they're not a basketball team. Um. Apparently, that would be different. That would be actually different. really heard. <laughs> I've only really heard about those in relation to the men in black phenomena. Ah, uh, got it. Oh, so, but tall for the men in black, really? Yeah, yeah I mean, black, some of them. I guess I've never heard of them being described as tall. Just, um, I don't know, men in black. Well, taller than your greys. Because your greys are well around as being quite short, aren't they? Well, yeah, there, there's usually two kind of greys. There's the, the little short ones who are about three and a half, four feet tall, and then you've got the the other ones that are that are about, you know, five, five and a half feet tall. And, and, and the, taller, the, taller, the, the taller ones seem to be contr- controlling what's going on, and the, and the little ones just kind of like run around doing munchkin work. Like ants. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like ants? yeah a, lot, a lot. A lot like ants. A lot like you know, or wasps, or any kind of critter like that. Yeah. Wow. All right. Okay. Well, that's crazy. Jordan, I want to. I want to really thank you for coming on today. Um, oh, well, thank you very would you much. Like, would, would you like to just let everybody know um, where, where where they can get a hold of you and where they can get a hold of your books and all that? Sure, sure. You know, always get a hold of me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I have a an Amazon web page, and if you just you know go to Amazon, uh, punch up books, and type in my name Jordan Hofer, uh, you'll see everything that I've written and everything that's coming up, and uh, there will be some fun stuff over the next couple of years. So I'm really looking forward to it and. And hopefully coming back uh, on this show. This has been a blast. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Well, I mean, been you're, um, fun. I think uh, I, I think um, when little grey bastards. I just love saying that now. Um, <laughs> when that officially comes out, I'd love to have you on again. You know, because I'm pretty sure we'll, we'll have a lot to to talk about once that comes out too. I'm sure we will. Well, thank you yeah. very much. Thank you, both of you. Thank well, you, Jordan. Thank you very much for coming on. I, it's been it's been an absolute blast, and um, I never thought I'd find a saying so much fun. But anyway, and um, <laughs> yeah, so we're going to go and have a little bit of a break now, and um, after the break, we're going to come back with uh, Archbishop Ron Fail from um, the Sacred Order, uh, and he's also the Chief Exorcist there. So I'll give him. I'll dial him up and I'll see if we can we can't get him on him. Sounds good, sounds good. Yeah, um 
not really working for me very nicely. Yeah, no, it doesn't seem to be going through for some reason. It's um, a great thing. Um, if anybody feels like calling in uh, just to have a chat, um, do so now while I'm trying to trying to sort this out. I love it when things like this happen. Um, I'm just going to start with me having a technical difficulty. Yeah, well, we're, we're taking turns now, Taryn. Um, I'm just um, trying to put in a number as well as talk at the same time. Um, which is a bit difficult. Let's try again. At least it's dialing. Hello? Hello, is that Archbishop Ron Fail? Do you know that I've been trying to call you? <laughs> Have you? Because I've been calling you at the same time. <laughs> yes. yes, the phone rang twice. Yes. And uh, hold on one second, because I'm going to turn. I have my computer on, and I need to turn you off for a second. Yep. And I'm sure you'll understand. Okay, now. And you're actually still on. Hold on one second. Yeah, okay. Can you country. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you very well. Okay, well, uh, I have to tell you, every time I'm interviewed on, on the phone, yep. uh, there's always some type of technical difficulties. <laughs> and, the, and the way I explain it is that, no doubt, the demonic forces are all around us. And any time yep. any of us use uh, an instrument such as a telephone or even a computer for that matter, um, we always seem to have technical difficulties. And I think the demonic actually yeah. gets into electronics. And when that happens, well, obviously there's a there's a problem in terms of, the, yes. uh, of getting a connection. But in any case, uh, th this happens to me every time. <laughs> yeah, well, this is, well, well, you're wow. on here now. Let's hope let's hope we have a uh, have a issue free time going on. Um, <laughs> I think that'd be that'd be really good. So, um, Archbishop, welcome to the show. It's um, Thank it's, you. it's really awesome having you on here. Um, you've been doing this for like thirty years now. Actually, it's pretty close to thirty four. Wow. Yes, it's wow, that, that's in, that, 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 that's incredible. How did you like? Yeah. I, I know you. I know you're a bishop, but how how does a bishop get involved in exorcisms? Well, this is a, a specialized ministry, if you will. What yeah. we have is a ministry of exorcism, and not all pastors, priests, or bishops can get involved in this type of ministry unless they have a calling. Yeah, this is the proverbial calling from God, if you will. Yeah, and. Uh, so that's so I had the calling um back in nineteen eighty. And uh at that time I was um uh, I had three mentors who were full time exorcists and they were well, they allowed me to tag along as the first or second priest that would assist them in various calls. Yes. yes. So that's how we I got started. Okay. Is that um is that was was that all through the Sacred Order of St Michael as well? Yes. Yeah. Well, at the time it was uh, it was St Michael's Catholic Parish, and okay. we were located in Highland Park. Um, and then uh, in 1981, we decided to uh, convert our ministry into a full-time ministry of exorcism. Yeah. And so then wow. we called it. Um, the Sacred Order of St. Michael the Archangel. Yeah. 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 Um, what is the actual setup of, of, of the Sacred Order? Of, of obviously, your well, chief... What we do, well, let me, let me tell you exactly what we do. Um, we're an international organization now. We yeah. have members in 24 countries, and we're in 14 <laughs> states in the United States. Wow. Um, we have uh, all together about 50 members. Uh, 20 of them are uh, a full-time exorcist. 
Uh, oh, yeah. Most of them are exit investigators. They will actually do the first contact interviews for us, and yeah. uh, they would do the conduct the actual demonic investigation, and then yeah. they would submit their uh, assessment report to my office. Yeah. And uh, our order, we have two medical physicians. We have a uh, family practitioner, and we also have a uh, psychiatrist. Okay. And the family practitioner is a is a, actually a priest. He's also sure. a priest in our order, and yeah. he has his jurisdiction in Florida. As I said, we are we're actually uh, cross country. Yeah. We're only in fourteen states, but we're uh, still growing. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, what we do is um, we get calls from around the world, actually, in regards to um, uh, requests for uh, an assessment in regards to yeah. anything demonic. Yeah. And then we have investigators uh, in place in various parts of the world. We will contact them with the information. Yeah. They put their team together, and they do an investigation and assessment and uh, along with the first uh, first contact interview. Once that's completed, then they uh, they put an assessment uh, report together, and that's forwarded to my office. Yeah. And at that time, we review the evidence, and if there's strong evidence suggesting that it's a truly uh, a real demonic, uh, whether it be an infestation or possession, uh, it will be revealed based on the evidence that's submitted to us. Yeah. If it's, uh, yeah. if it's a case of demonic possession, we uh, we request a, a psychological and physical examination uh, be done, and yeah. the reports are forwarded to my office, and I in turn forward them to our medical physicians. Okay. And then they give me their recommendations. Yeah. Cool. So in in terms to in, in terms of possession. Um, how rare would you say real cases of possession actually are? It's extremely rare. It's extremely rare. Yeah. I, I say um, out of 100 cases uh, that were called on, I'd say maybe one or two might be actually genuine uh, possession. But when I say yeah. genuine possession, I'm, regard, I'm, I'm referring to all the various signs and evidence that the uh, that the case is uh, no doubt, and genuine uh, demonic possession. And we're, of course, yeah. we're re- referring to all the things you've seen in the movies, <laughs> but yeah. uh, a few other things that uh, might be of interest to you that I could discuss, uh, if you like. Yeah, like, well, I mean, I guess I guess that leads me to another question. Um, in relation to possession, how accurate are the movies? How accurate? Yeah. Um, well, this this relies uh, uh, very largely on our assessment. When we make the first contact, we do a face-to-face interview. We um, make sure the individual uh, furnishes us with all the evidence, and then we have our investigators that will actually do an, and conduct an investigation. They will use scientific yeah. equipment, and yeah. they will use recorders and so on. And then um, if we feel it's a, it's a case of demonic possession, then we have a physician, a medical physician, uh, would get involved, and a psychiatrist would get involved. Okay. And uh, so we would have them see them, the, the, the various physicians, before we even get involved. We have to make sure that it's a truly uh, real case of possession. And so, you know, it, the, the whole process takes anywhere from two to three months. Yeah. From start to uh, uh, from start to the final step of the process. So yeah. it's it's not just something that's just you know done overnight. No. And we no. don't just so jump in and do a, an exorcism. It's, that's that's not the way it's done. You know, yeah. we have to do the legwork. We do the investigation. You know, we make sure that this is a real case and not just simply a case of mental illness or some other. Um, in influence, if you will, we have to make sure that it's a, a truly of a demonic nature. So we use yeah. the uh, we use both the uh, scientific and our own uh, theology. We, we we combine it together and and we come up with uh, you know with our findings. And so to answer your question, I say we're about ninety eight percent accurate in terms of yeah. 
judging whether or not uh, a case is of a demonic nature or if it's just simply a case of maybe mental illness. In 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 relation to the signs um, that that show, um, are the movies acu- actually accurate to to the signs or? Well, if you remember the the original movie, The Exorcist, you know yeah. uh, that was a little bit of, of an exaggeration. I have never seen a head spin around 360 <laughs> degrees. Right? I've never seen that. <laughs> However, I have seen I have seen individuals actually levitate about four to five feet. I've seen wow. people who have actually had the, their um, their entire appearance would transform. I had a, a woman that transformed into what might look more like a man, if you will, and actually grew four or five inches taller. Uh, I've seen hair change in different colors. Uh, wow. Their eyes would, would, would just uh, completely dilate to one solid color. Um, even um, you would see um, various signs on the body where um, there would be uh, something written across the body, and it would come okay. from from in, from within the person. It could be a cross. It could actually be a word, and uh, such as hell, or right. um, or mine, or something like that in that nature. Okay. But the uh, but they and of course the spitting. Um, is very common. I mean, you talk about accuracy. A person who yeah. is truly possessed can spit across the room and and hit you right in the eye. They <laughs> talk about dead, dead right on accuracy. It's oh, it's a, <laughs> it's incredible. Not only that, but the person would have the ability of clairvoyance. Could actually tell you everything about you or anyone in the room. Would also know um, things that they would have no knowledge of. They would okay. be able to have the ability to speak other languages that they have never been taught or would have uh, no way of learning. Yeah. Um, you know, the signs go on and on, and not to mention the things that are flying around in the in the room. Yeah. Um, I've been hit many times uh, physically and by in- invisible entities. My last episode, I was attacked by an entity... And it felt like, and this is during the ritual, I felt a two-by-four literally uh, uh, slam into the left side of my chest. And I could feel it went right through my, uh, I could feel the, the penetration. It was three whacks. And, and, uh, and as that occurred, it took my breath away. And I had an extremely hard time finishing the ritual, which I, which I did, uh, you know, follow through on that. We have a... Um, you know, we have a team that goes with us, and in this team we have a uh, a Reverend Mother Susan, who's also in charge of the Order of Saint Hilda. She oh, okay. comes uh, also in as a support measure, and um, she came one time uh, at one of our last uh, episodes where she placed her hand on a wall that was um, said to be some type of vortex where demonic or negative influences were coming through this wall. Now she wow. is a, a physician. Uh, she's actually a, a physicist, profession, okay. and so she's a scientist. So she had to examine the surface. She wanted to feel either there was a heat or vibration or something, something totally abnormal. And so she tried. And of course, this is after I had instructed her not to touch anything. But she <laughs> okay. she had to she had to uh, she had to experiment. So she placed her palm on the wall. And she did not feel any heat, any vibrations, uh, no form of moisture. Uh, it was just uh, just normal. And then yeah. as we left the house and we were in the car, she looked at her hand and it was a blood stain all over the palm of her hands. She could well, not wash it out for three days. The stain <coughs> remained on the surface of her hand and on the palm of her hand. I believe yeah. it was her left palm. And that was quite interesting. We had a, a lot of other interesting adventures, if you will, if you want to call them that. But yeah. um, it's uh, it, it's been a it's been a ride. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. When you're experiencing things like that, that's pretty. That's 
I, I might and, also add too. I actually couldn't watch that it last attack. That very last attack put yeah. me in the hospital a week later, and I was in the hospital for one month, and wow. uh, and three operations. Now this is what this is all due to a demonic attack, a physical demonic attack. Um, they uh, found uh, they examined me. They found. Uh, that I had a sack of blood around my heart. It was two liters of blood, which Jeez. appeared out of nowhere. Um, I was in the hospital for a month, and to this day they still uh, have no understanding as to how I was able to uh, come to these um, to this condition. Uh, it was, uh, and, and all this is absolutely positively true. It's documented, San Antonio yeah. Hospital in Upland, and uh, th- you know this is like a real happening. Uh, supernatural happening, if you will, because this was done by an invisible entity. The two by four yeah. that I felt hit the side of my body was invisible, and wow. as a result, uh, yeah, it's uh, something I'll never forget. That was probably the worst. I've had lamps thrown at me, where I've, I've struck, been struck to the head, but with a lamp. I've had wow. even a, a chair fly from across the room. And just like you know, went, like went into my direction, and I, I, of course, I jumped out of out of the way. But it was a very, it was like full force, and it was the yeah. one of these old, old fashioned chairs, you know, with the cushions and the and 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 the, a very heavy chair, and it just literally was lifted and thrown across the room. Wow! And um, yeah, so the movies uh, aren't that far off reality, then, hey? No, they're they're not. Of course, you know, in in the movies, of course, they have to try to, you know, try to make it as dramatic as possible. But the reality yeah. is that real life is just as dramatic. Um, mm. These things truly happen. Anyone, yeah. um, anyone in my order, you know, the order of exorcists, can uh, tell you. I mean, we have teams in various countries and in the United yeah. States as well, and they do the assessment. They do. They conduct a demonic investigation. They could tell you firsthand that these things actually happen, and these yeah. things are real. And so, as a result, you know, we, we, uh, you know, we try to be extremely careful. And of course, we have an ongoing training program that uh, is uh, involved. That all our members are, uh, they're encouraged to uh, attend. Yeah. And so, this is what we do. We keep, we keep everyone abreast who are who's in the order as to what cases are being worked on. And uh, and any input that uh, any other teams may have in regards to a certain case, and uh, you know, this type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know I've, email, I've emailed you on a few cases already. Um, yeah, we just um, have a have a caller come through. Actually, I hope you don't mind. Um, Eric, code three three seven. Do you have a um, question for Archbishop Ron? Yes, I do. How is everybody? Very good. Good, good. Hi, hi. How are y'all? We're all very good. What's your what, What's your question? Okay, I have a question. Earlier, you were discussing about how it takes months um, as far as investigating a possession case. So, what for it to take months? What equipment are you using, and and how, how? What solution do you come to that that you actually are convinced that it's actually a possession that you have to exercise it? Okay, I could I could barely hear her. I, I I'm gonna I I think she's asking what what type of technique we use and and uh, she was she was asking what type of, uh, um yeah she was she was asking in relation to. Um, she was saying what what sort of takes months and in the investigation of of it, what equipment is used and how mm-hmm. do you come to the final decision that this person is actually possessed and needs an exorcism okay what what we do is we have investigators that are paranormal investigators and use the various equipment uh you know that could uh, trace, uh, infrared, uh, heat sensor, the, the whole nine yards. I'm not a paranormal investigator, but I'll tell you that we have people who are, and they have all this electronic equipment. And, of course, they gather all the information, and uh, and they, they incorporate it into their assessment. Now, this inc- also includes videos, which I could understand 
that, of course, uh, and, and as I view it and, and I'm watching the interview take place, the first contact interview, this type of scenario, and uh, so all that information is forwarded to my office. And at that, at that point, we review everything. Uh, if we, uh, if we, uh, if the investigators have a, a strong feeling that it is a possession, then at that point, we have them go back and uh, try to. Um, obtain a medical and psychological examination, and uh, many people aren't in position to uh, to afford you know, these type of things, but again, we refer them to free clinics. There are a lot of free services that are available out there where where a person could actually obtain a, uh, uh, a psychological evaluation or even a physical uh, examination. And then, of course, that material is forwarded to my office, and at that point, we make uh, a decision based on that. If for some reason, um, the medical um, has no, um, they can't explain why this individual is being levitated four or five feet up in the air, uh, why things are flying around, and uh, other things uh, uh, that is completely abnormal for an individual, for a human being, then they would tell us so, and then we would make an assessment based on that. Uh, we have a psychiatrist who would also review the psychological reports. Um, yeah. If there's a, a case or a history of some type of mental illness, then of course we look further into that. But we will not do, or I will not authorize an exorcism for the sake of just simply um, saying, well, let's go through it because they're you know, telling us that they're possessed and we have to take their word for it, so therefore we're going to cater to the way. It doesn't work that way. We have to make sure that we're totally, completely convinced that it's a real, real case. Well, what makes, if you, it is, what makes you? What makes you? Let me interrupt you because I want. I want to know what makes you, on a, on a psychological level. You know, some people consider different things. Like, uh, if you're schizophrenic or if you have uh, multiple personality disorders, they may not consider that of a demonic nature, but some people do. Mm-hmm. So, so let me ask you this. So, what on a psychological level? Do you consider that it's actually, you know, a possession that they need to be, it needs to be exercised? Well, being being that I'm not a psychiatrist, um, but we do have a psychiatrist who uh, who's, who's on staff. They would. I'm sorry. No, I'm agreeing with you. Yes. Oh yes, uh, they would make the, uh, you know, the diagnosis, and then they would make their recommendations to me. Now, if I see something on tape where which suggests that there's something more than just a uh, uh what might appear to be a um, some form of psychosis where the individual is speaking in different languages maybe multiple languages at one time where the individual has super strength that uh that we we catch this on tape or if we see something that cannot be explained scientifically that gives us uh, the the motivation to continue to go on and authorize uh, an exorcism, but we yeah. have to be thoroughly convinced that it's it's a true uh, a case beyond a shadow of a doubt. Right. Yeah. And how often does this happen? How often? It's it's so rare. It, it, as I said, uh, out of a hundred cases, maybe one, maybe two might be actually genuine. Most of the time, it's either uh, demonic oppression. Or it's uh, it could even be a demonic infestation, and uh, and if that be the case, well then obviously there are other ways that we would handle the situation. So a yeah. psychiatrist that comes in and says that oh, I'm sorry, Brad, excuse me, a psychiatrist yeah. that comes in and says that um, no, this person is whatever they diagnose them. You're okay with that, even though possibly and, 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 he's still I'm different. I'm so sorry, I can't I could barely hear you. Okay, can, can you? Can you can you can you hear me now, sir? Um, just just barely. But 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 continue your question. Brent. I'll try to make it out. Uh, uh, Brett, did you hear my question? Yeah, she was uh, she was asking about um, on 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 the psychological level. Um, mm-hmm. Is that is that sort of what you were asking? Was it that uh, on 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 a psychological level, weeding out possession? 
Yeah, because um, I think it's kind of. That's the thing. I'm guessing, Brett, I'm, I'm guessing what she's saying. If all the if all the signs aren't sort of there, like like the speaking in tongues and all that sort of stuff, um, can can a can a demon on a psychological level hide behind a mental illness? Well, you know, I, I'll tell you, uh, a demon could try to hide, but we have ways to reveal them. Uh, and as a result, uh, we use uh, weapons like in our arsenal, such as holy water and holy sacraments. Um, the person who is possessed will become extremely irritated, uh, so much so that uh, you will see a change in that person physically. And you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that that person is possessed. Uh, mm. And this is, uh, you know, and, and in regards to psychological, um, you know, if it's a psychological problem, then we have the psychological profile um, done, and then uh, you know the report is submitted to our, to my office, and, and we in turn submit it to our uh, physicians, and they will look at it uh, from a scientific point of view, and if they feel that you know that this isn't a psychosis or some of the things or some of the answers um, are not explainable, then we'll look further into it. Because at that point, yeah. you know, we, we have to, we try to sign, assign a priest to the case, and that's after we get the green lights from our physicians and, and from um, our assessments based on the physical evidence that's provided to us. Mm. Wow. Mm. Very interesting. Thank you, Brett. No worries at all. No worries. All right, all. guys. Y'all, y'all have a good night. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you. Too. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? But thank you. No worries. <laughs> have a good night. Did all you right, say thank you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't know if he can hear me. I feel so bad. So, anyway, thank you. He did answer my question. So, anyway, guys, um, I'm going to continue listening in. And, um, anyway, have a good night. Okay. You, you too. too. You too. All you right. Too. Honey, bye. I, I'm yeah. so sorry. I really couldn't hear her. No, no, that, that's okay. It seems to be um, just one Were you of, having one a problem? Were you able to hear her? Sometimes on here. Yes, yes. It's a, you know, it, it's a, it's a problem. I, I suppose at times. Um, I but unfortunately, I just thing. couldn't. I couldn't make out what she was saying. Unfortunately. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I, that's a, a a common I, thing on here. Like. Sometimes uh, I don't hear Taryn, my co-host, all that well, and then when I go back well, and listen to the archive, she's I'm, actually quite clear on the archive. Really? Okay. Well, well, well. Actually, I, I hope I was able to answer a question. I, I, yes, I think it's, it's yes. very. I'm sorry. I'll get her to. I'll, I'll get her to write it out on on the on on through through Facebook there, and I'll see. I'll see if um if that was answered. Yes, she said. She actually said that you did answer it. That's great. Oh, good, yeah, well, th- well, tell her thank you for, for the question. Do you know that um, most people are not familiar with the process? There's an actual mm. process that goes on, and we have we have a a procedure to follow. We have a criteria to follow, and of course, this is what I instill upon our members who are investigators. They have to follow a procedure, which is to collect as much information as possible. And if they could tape the interview, the first contact interview is extremely important because you can yep. tell as to what takes place. Um, I, I, could, I could tell you from experience, I have done many in first contact interviews. And in the process, when a house is, has a demonic infestation, things happen in the house as you're, in, as you're, as you're actually uh, conducting the interview. For example, yep. um, Foul odors. I mean, unbelievable, real stench uh, type of uh, of odors would come out of uh, you know just simply uh, from, from different uh, parts of the house. Then yeah. you'd hear a banging. I mean, this is what I was experiencing: banging sensation, uh, banging like banging the walls. And every once in a while, you'll hear someone knock on the door, and there's nobody out there, but you'll hear three knocks. And of course, mm. you know, the three knocks is very, you know, it, it's a symbolic thing. It's it's. Um, it simply is a, a mock. Uh, it, it's a mockery against the Trinity, tr- against the Holy yeah. Trinity, and that's why you you hear things in threes. So you'll hear, th- you'll hear knocking on the front door, sometimes the back door. So you, sometimes you'll hear the scratching sounds as well. And this is joint. This is as you're you're doing and you're conducting the first contact interview. All these things uh, might might actually occur, especially if there's a demonic infestation involved. Um, it's it's quite interesting. 
Yeah, um, I guess a lot of people listening probably wouldn't understand um, fully the difference between um, oppression, possession, and oh, well, okay, and all, all, all that. Would you be able to ext- describe? Sure, sure, the sure. Let me explain that to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, allow me to explain that. There are three types of demonic attacks, if you will. There's demonic oppression. And this is like a mild to severe harassment by an evil spirit that's uh, resulting from some doors that may have opened to uh, Satan's influence. For example, um, if a person um, decides to open themselves to, let's say, even deep, the deep thought of paranormal and communicating with spirits, by doing so, you're opening the doors to all kinds of, 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 of possible things. The point of entry when it comes to demonic oppression is the mind. And okay. so as this occurs, this is the first step to possibly possession. See, if a person could, be, could have a demonic oppression for years. And what this is, these are demons that will wear you down mentally. And, yeah. and as you succumb to their, to their temptations and to their oppressions, um, it, it will bring you to a point where you're just about ready just to give up. And at that point, some people actually commit suicide if not yes. possessed by a, a, a demon. Of course, the next type of or next form of attack is, is demonic uh, possession. Now, demonic, demonic possession is a complete takeover of the mind and body. And yes. uh, it can, it, it's actually a condition that could actually be done by one or more spirits. There could be a multiple demonic uh, spirits that are involved in the actual takeover of a human being. And when this happens, the personality of the demon will actually be manifested through that person, through that person's okay. body. Yeah. And then, of course, the last one is demonic infestation. Now, demonic infestation is, uh, is where the demon has roam of a, of a space, a house, okay. location. Uh, generally speaking, um, the outside, Let's say the outer manifestations would be cold spots, strange odors, knocking on doors and walls, objects moving, uh, things of this nature. And mm. so that would be, um, you know, I, I suppose you could call it a haunting because that's exactly what it is. It's a demonic infestation is uh, a form of a haunting that's done by, the, uh, by, by demonic forces. And so those yeah. are the three uh, attacks. That uh, that we're all subject to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think um, of those three. Um, so obviously, infestation you'd say would be the most common, or or oppression. Infestation is the most common. Uh, okay. Of course, so is oppression. You know, oppression is 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 uh, always out there uh, for anyone that has a mind. <laughs> uh, yeah. if, if you have an open mind to certain new things, if you have an open mind to, uh, to uh, experimentation. Yeah. Um, I could tell you many stories um, involving a, a Ouija board. Yeah. I could tell you many stories regarding uh, seances. Uh, in fact, the yeah. majority, <laughs> and you might find this interesting, and, and so, so would your listeners, um, yeah. the majority of the people that contact us who have problems with um, demonic attachments or um, uh, which uh, demonic oppression or even infestation are paranormal investigators. <laughs> About seventy okay. percent of the people that contact us are either investigators or they're some type of a paranormal researcher, and as a result, they're having all kinds of problems. And mostly, it's due to a demonic attachment. When you go right. into a place. Um, I always tell our people that you must make sure that you take the proper precautions. Make sure that you are protected spiritually before you even enter the premises of a uh, of, of a place that might be um, roamed by demonic entities, such as such as what you would find in an infestation. Uh, it's extremely yeah. important that you protect yourself and every member of the group uh, that's part of a paranormal group. They have to be protected before they 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 venture into uh, going and placing themselves basically in danger. The demonic spirits are extremely aggressive. They're known to yeah. push people. They're known to bite people. 
They're also known to scratch people. There, there was a, a case in, um, in, in California uh, just a few years ago where a, uh, a group of paranormal investigators went into a house, and uh, this was in uh, San Pedro, I believe, and um, okay. the individual, the, one of the individuals went up to the attic, and, uh, and he disappeared for a few minutes. And then the, um, uh, some of his team members wanted to investigate to see where, where he went, and so they went upstairs, and he was hanging from the ceiling. Apparently, oh. uh, some type of demonic entity was able to place a wire around his neck and suspend him from a uh, ceiling that was at least 15 feet high. Oh, and, he, and there was no way in the world he would be able to, to do that himself or anyone else for that matter. There was no trace. Uh, in fact, this is a true case. Uh, it's uh, you could probably look it up, uh, you know, maybe on YouTube, YouTube or, or some documentary. But the, but anyway, these type yeah. of things do occur, and they're very yeah. aggressive. That's that's pretty scary, really. That just he can be walking around investigating. Next thing you know, gets attacked by something and killed. Mm-hmm. Very much so scary. Very scary. Our teams when our teams. Um, are assigned a case, uh, and the, and these are cases that uh, that we get, uh, you know, and they they come in almost every day. When they come in, they yeah. come in from various parts of the world, if you will. If I have a team in that city, I will assign that team, and I tell each team member that they have to be strong in their faith. And if yeah. one person is weak, and one person is on the fence, and what's going to happen is that's going to be the weak link of the whole for the whole team. And, it, and the consequences could be very devastating. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I've I, I heard a lot of talk lately online, actually, which uh, frustrates the hell out of me, actually. But people are saying, oh, there's too much talk about demons. We need to stop talking about demons and all that kind of stuff. Well, this, is, this is what I do. I mean, uh, as a, as, and I, I don't think as, there's enough. The, that's what exorcisms is about. Exorcism is dealing, and, and it's, a, it's a warfare with a demon. It's not uh, a human spirit. This is a demonic entity, and and this is what I do. This is what uh, yeah. what the ministry of the Exodus is about. Of course, it's going to be demons. Of course, we're going to be talking about. Oh demons. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, I'm, I was just saying that I think people should be talking more about it because I find people out there don't want to believe in demons, um, and. They're actually putting themselves in harm, not wanting to do that. There, there have been many right. of cases where individuals, and I'm referring to paranormal investigators who are not prepared and who have not a, a clear uh, uh, stand in, in regards to this war that we're in, because we're in a war, by, yeah. by the way. This is a spiritual war that we are in. This, uh, the world is a battleground. And yes. this war is uh, it's 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 being fought even as I speak. There are hmm. teams, investigation teams out there doing assessments. We have yeah. exorcists that are doing exorcisms even as we speak. And yeah. uh, this is real. This is as real hmm. as it gets. Yeah. Most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. Um. What I wanted to ask was, I think we've, we've talked a little bit about on this, on this already. Um, do you think, when it comes to people having these oppression situations, or even um, infestations, or like worst case scenario possessions, do you think that people do anything to cause this, or is it just lack of draw, wrong place, wrong time? Okay, you know, believe it or not, I, I, uh, you were weaving in and out there. Uh, I apologize. Oh, really? I think. Uh, but yeah, can you can you repeat your question again? I'm sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, that's fine. Um, in in relation to infestation, oppression, and possession, people that are suffering from this, do they necessarily do anything to call, bring it on themselves, or is it yes. just luck of the draw? No, 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 no. It's, it's, there's no lack of the drawer involved here. In in order for yes. the demonic to have Rome within your immediate space, you have to invite it in. Now, whether it's intentionally or unintentionally, um, if you make any type of um, of gesture, 
and and welcome a spirit in. And you know, the, the the perfect scenario, of course, would be Ouija boards. You know, the first thing yeah. that a person does is uh, he wants to he wants the entity to identify themselves. He wants yeah. the entity um, to continue a dialogue, and as a result, you're opening a door that's just beyond the control of anyone. Once you open that yeah. door, anything could come through. It's not necessarily meaning that a, a human spirit is going to come through and communicate with you. Most of the time, it's yeah. a demonic entity. And they come in, and they will be dressed in sheep's clothing. They are wolves yeah. in sheep's clothing. They will come yeah. in. They will convince you that they are an angel of light. They will convince you yeah. that they are, um, you know, they're there for your benefit and for your well-being. But to the yeah. contrary, it's all part of their strategy. They want to make sure yeah. that you invite them in. They're going to be make, they, they'll make sure that they're available so they can hear you invite them in. And once you you invite them in, then you're subject to not only demonic oppression, but even possibly demonic possession. Yeah. And infestation is also another another thing in regards to opening those doors and inviting the entity in. And, and you know, this could be totally unintentional. You know, you're playing a game. You're sitting around with friends. You're playing with a Ouija board. It's a game. But you have no idea what you're inviting into your immediate space. And once that happens, anything could happen. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I guess... Um the one thing I thought I'd, I'd, I'd run by you um, tonight and see if this is your experience and everybody else's experience too. Every demonic case I have done initially has showed themselves as either a child or an old man or in some manner like that. And it seems to be to lull the people into a false sense of, secu uh, of security. Yeah. And then eventually it gets more and more malevolent. That's as very the true. Case Under goes on. Understand this too. The the demonic entity has no body, has no physical body. Yeah. That demonic entity could get into an animal, can possess an animal. Uh yeah. that demonic entity can uh, attach itself to physical things. That demonic entity can actually infiltrate you as a human being and first become come on strong as a demonic oppression scenario where you're constantly being worn down mentally and up yeah. to the point where you are just to a point where you're just ready to give up uh and then you know you, you become isolated you know uh friends and families are you know they're, they're not welcome to be around you anymore you make it verbally clear you you become angry you become violent you become um Totally, uh, even a deep state of depression could occur. Uh, there are yeah. many things that will occur when a person is at this state. Uh, and again, the whole thing is, it could have been avoided, but you know, it, part of the human experience is we have to explore. I mean, this is what, what we do. You know, as human beings, we need to explore everything. And uh, it's just part of human nature. So to answer yeah. your question earlier, okay, is it the luck of the drawer? No, it's not. But if you put yourself in harm's way, then expect to be bit because it's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a that's a very good, very good statement there in relation to use of <clears throat> divination tools. I always say to people, you know, like you may get away with it a hundred times. All it needs is that one occasion. And your life will never be the same ever again. That's very true. That's right. very true. And uh, and you're lucky if you do get away with it that many times. <laughs> As yeah. I said, the uh, demonic entity is they're just waiting for someone to open the door uh, by way of their mind, if you will. And by doing yeah. this... Um, you know, we, you know. As I said, the war has has already begun a long time ago, and uh, the battle is here. And I, I'm sorry, you know, to keep um, bringing this up, but but we are. This is a serious situation, and people are dying. Yeah. People are yeah. being driven to commit suicide as a result of demonic oppression. They are yeah. being pushed to that area. 
You see, the demon gets extreme pleasure just to, um, uh, the demon wants you to, um, to wear yourself down. And, and as long as there's breath in your body, it will take extreme pleasure to make you suffer and try yeah. to make you suffer as long as possible. And this is what he does. And, it, and, and you know, the, the, the physical manifestations could be um, self-mutilation. Self-mutilation is very common when a person is, um, has a, a possession. Uh, and self-mutilation is... I, I could tell you of a case I had in North Hollywood. Um, this was a girl. She was, oh, she, she was 12 years old. A young girl. And uh, we went to... The grandfather led us into her room, and she was there... She was in the corner of the room, and she was stooped over, and she was naked, and her her back was towards us, and she was eating something. And as we approached her, we found that what she was eating was a cat. She apparently was just chewing on this cat. And again, with the bones, she with the other hand, she was stabbing herself and making, cutting herself with these bones of the, of the animal that she was consuming. Again, uh, this is the personality of the demon. The person has no control over what happens. In most cases, when a person is possessed, they will actually um, become totally lose control and go into a place of rest, like slumber, while the demonic is actually fully aware as to what's going on, has full control of the individual. And then the person, of course, would be weaving in and out, uh, in and out of consciousness, then all the way to uh, uh, unconsciousness when the demon takes over and that personality is revealed. It's it's just absolutely horrible. It's one of the most horrible things you will ever witness. Mm. And yeah. unfortunately, yeah. Uh, I could tell you this because uh, I've been doing this for almost 34 years. My first yeah. my first um, um, ritual, if you will, I was assisting this bishop, one of my bishops, and uh, and I couldn't believe what went on, and and I could remember being uh, just shaking in my in my shoes, if you will, because you know I I've read about this firsthand, and this is close to 34 years ago. I yeah. know I had all the head knowledge, um, in, in regards to what need to, needed to be done and what to expect, and yet what you see when you see it face to face and you see something that you never thought can ever be. Uh, and it takes place in very, in, in, right before your very eyes. Believe me, you could be shaken. Um, yeah. This last episode I had when I, I, when I was attacked with this invisible two by four, I could tell you that this really brought me down and, and uh, several notches. Uh, I'm yeah. even more cautious when I approach cases of real demonic possession, and I make sure that I instill upon our priests and bishops to do the same. Because this is a very serious scenario. Mm. In fact, in a real case, it's a matter of life and death. Yeah. Wow. I've been kind of quiet. Karen, did you have a question kind of been, me? Yeah, and I've been kind of quiet. I've just been listening and kind of in awe. And he, he kind of just answered my question. I was going to ask him um, if when he does does these exorcisms, if, it, if he's scared, physically scared. Um, and um, he kind of he kind of just answered that. So maybe he was, you know, kind of. Read my mind. <laughs> let me let but me I, just elaborate a little bit on that too. It, it's not. It's to a point of 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 not being like so frightened. I, I I'm not able to continue to do what I'm what, what I'm called to do. But I'm yeah. thrown. Oh, I'm thrown back over the over the situation. Every case is totally different. I mean, totally completely different. Um, not every case of possession involves uh, levitation. Not every case. Uh, involves um, um, the hair coloring changing or the facial uh, recognition change completely or the gender changing of the individual um, or the person uh, actually changing and transforming into some type of reptile. Um, oh. <laughs> I mean, this is like all real. I mean, it's it's just so real that it's uh, it, it will take anyone back, but in the same token, every case is totally different and we're there for, you know, we're there actually to to try to help the individual who's called us, and so we have to make sure we do a thorough job. If it's a if it's a case of mental illness, then we will refer that person to a psychiatrist uh, after okay. after our psychiatrist has has interpreted the uh, the reports. Um, 
And, of course, we have an aftercare program as well. If an individual um, actually has a possession or even a, an infestation, and once we are there and we take care of the problem, we um, continue to contact them at least once a month, um, sometimes just through e email or a phone call, just to make sure everything is okay. And that goes yeah. on for a year after each case. So, you know, we have all these little programs in place, and they work. And uh, hmm. I say out of the out of ten people that we may have been successful in terms of of um, of, of driving out the demon or demons, um, maybe four of them will be repossessed, where the demons will come back. And that would happen if, uh, in fact, the numbers would be a lot high if we didn't have an aftercare program. Okay. okay. And yeah. see, once this happens, the person has to be willing to change their lives, to alter their their um, their their mode in terms of of certain belief systems. You know, they have to be willing to do this. If they're willing to do this and they follow our guidelines, then the odds are they're going to be okay for the rest of their existence. But if they go yeah. back to, let's say, practicing, um, you know, um, maybe the uh, some occults and, and or or Satan worshiping or or whatever the case may be. Uh, if yeah. they go back to that, to their old practices, then the odds are they, they could be they're, they're opening themselves to to be repossessed. If you will. Mm. 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 Scary. Yeah. It's pretty scary when you realize, like, one of the best sayings I heard um, when I started studying all the, all all this stuff and look and um, doing it. Myself, as I, I heard that um, they're saying, why would a why would a demon throw you out a window when he can he can oppress you to the point where you do it yourself? Exactly, that's a, that's right. a perfect scenario. That's an, that, that's yeah. exactly right. <clears throat> that's exactly right. Yeah. They will push yeah. you and they will wear you down until you're up to that point where you're up to a point of self destruction. And that's their goal. Mm. And, and, and in fact, in the um, the prayer that we use, the Saint Michael's prayer, it even says, you know, where the demons roam. Okay, they roam the world for the ruins of souls. They're looking, they're waiting and looking and watching, and they're just waiting yeah. for the opportunity to come in and and take a, either if it's not oppression, a full possession. They're rare, but they do happen. Yeah. 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 And once they've got a grasp, they just don't let go. Mm, scary stuff. Um, of of how many like there's been uh, quite a few attacks on 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 some of the priests around the world too, hasn't there? Oh yes, yes, yes. Uh, again, uh, like uh, like in every profession, you have uh, people who are very gifted in what they do. And then you have the novelist. Um, there are some clergy that may have read a few books and may have uh, taken uh, the the two month course in the, at the Vatican, and uh, and then at that point they may go out and be still unprepared. And if that yeah. happens, uh, uh, definitely an atta a demonic attachment could take place, even a possession. Yeah. So yeah, that does happen. Because yeah, I guess, uh, um, oh. One of the questions I had is sorry, Taryn, to interrupt. Um, oh, that's okay. The um, a lot of people say there's only ever been one recorded death from from a from a demonic possession or whatever, but you refute that 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 um, that story. Let's put it this way: um, yeah. this has been going on for thousands of years. Thousands yeah. of years, okay, at least a couple of thousand. Okay, at the time of Christ, and he was the chief exorcist of all exorcists because yeah. he was the son of God, is the son of God. As a result, um, this has been going on from the beginning of time, at least up to that point. Let me te yeah. let me say this, okay, because of our t modern technology, we have the internet, we have our computers, we have the radio, we have televisions, we have things of this nature, you know, state of the art technology. We're aware more so of demonic activities and statistics than, let's say, a uh, hundred years ago, when, yeah. when all of these things were not in existence. Okay, we know for a fact, and of course you have to also understand too that the church keeps 
this type of scenario quite quiet. Because, mm. let's face it, if now, I'm telling you things that are known facts in our yeah. ministry, and uh, and this is the type of thing that would never be discussed openly. Mm. But it is now because of, of, of the openness of our technology, and we're able to do this. We're able to, to actually speak of these things. Okay. Yeah. Um, suicides uh, through self-mutilation occurs when it's a true case of demonic, I'd say at least 50, maybe more percent of the yeah. time. There's a lot of deaths uh, in this country due to demonic possession. And you know what? I'm going to yeah. get a lot of flack by saying that, but I'll tell you that's the truth. But you yeah. will never hear about these things unless you're connected to certain circles. Yeah. And uh, so this is inside information, if you will. That's now it's no longer a secret. I mean, um even the Vatican has 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 made has made a point of um making it well well known that the uh that exorcists are needed in every diocese. Mm. And as a result, they have training programs. Uh, the 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 uh, the US uh Roman Catholic bishops sponsor a program in Maryland um and and it's a you know, it's it's a uh, it's, it's a few weeks, I believe, and as a result, it's uh, you know it, it's more and more open right now. The yeah. Ministry of Exorcism is 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 going to become more and more popular as these cases uh, uh, yeah. become revealed, and uh, and there's been a lot of cases in the past that you've never heard of. You don't have yeah. no idea what the statistics are, but um, yeah. I could tell you that they are they're pretty high. Wow. Yeah, well, Australia seems to be a bit slower in the churches to come up with, um, with with that concept. I'm hoping Australia catches up relatively soon on that one, because um, I get just as much of a hard time through the church as I do outside of the church. Yeah. In the ministry, which which I, which I think is quite sad, but I hope that changes relatively soon. Sorry, Taryn, did you have a question? Actually, you asked my question, so no. Oh, did I? <laughs> yes, you did. Oh, well, that was. I think we're that was very good the planning, way. wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. We have, well, you might find this interesting too. We have people in our order, um, investigators, yeah. who are hypersensitive. They have, um, they have been blessed, and I think we all have been blessed who are in the order, uh, with the yeah. gift of discernment. But the, we have people who are very much um, aware, at least uh, they utilize their six senses, if you will. They go beyond that. They're super sensitive, and they're very important in regards to their input when we receive yeah. our assessments of an individual, which is extremely helpful. Yeah. Um, also understand, too, that, uh, and uh, maybe I'm jumping from one subject to another, but but. There are a lot of churches that will not acknowledge the existence of demons. They are, yeah. they would uh, they would more like uh, likely acknowledge the existence of mental illness, and uh, and science opposes the spiritual yeah. side uh, of of our scenario. Yeah. So um, there are a lot of Protestant churches that uh, that um, may acknowledge the fact that there are demons, but they are, are not fully equipped. To uh, to handle them, and I and, and and I don't say that like light, lightly. Uh, there are some no. um, there are some Christian churches, pro, uh, Protestant churches, that perform um, deliverances, and uh, and they're yeah. extremely effective. Um, as a Catholic, what we use is things that that are referred to as sacramentals, uh, things yeah. that have been blessed, you know, by a priest, and mm. uh, and so we cling on to our to our various uh, tools of the trade, if you will. And uh, and they seem to be effective. Yeah. Can I ask too? Because I noticed there's a lot of people around these days that, and I, I don't I don't know what your answer will be, but I thought I'd ask you ask it anyway. Um, there's a lot of people out there claiming that they do Skype exorcisms. Okay. What's your? Uh, what's I, your I'm sorry to say you're going to have to repeat that? the question. <laughs> Because I, I could barely hear you. Try, try that oh, again. Okay. 
there's a lot of people out there that claim to do Skype exorcisms. What's your point of view on that? A lot of people, they go out and they do exorcisms, you say? Skype. Was that your question? Exorcisms over Skype. Okay, I, I I still couldn't fully hear you, but I'm I'm going to assume that you, that that's what you're asking. So let me uh, respond by saying that there are a lot of people out there that will say they are, are capable and gifted to do an exorcism. And when you hear that approach, I would uh, look twice and I would examine who they are. Um, you cannot do an exorcism um, like um, certain. Um, uh, I don't really want to mention any names, but um, there's one very famous uh, exorcist. He's a Protestant exorcist. And he says he could do an exorcism by way of Skype over the computer. Um, yeah, that's see, what I was we feel that. that that's not possible because what we yeah. do is we anoint the individual with oil. We sprinkle the individual with holy water. We pray over the individual by touching the individual. We can't do that over the computer. Um, uh. And again, you know... Uh, there's a lot of um, uh, people that will tell you that they are that they're qualified to do this this thing, and and I'll tell you right now, there are clergy that are not qualified to do this. There's quite a few clergy that may be out there that may not be qualified to do this because in order to do this, you have to have what I refer to as the calling. You have to be called by God to do right. this type of ministry. If you're not called by God, then you don't have God's blessing. And as a result, your level of commitment may not be there. And it could be very dangerous to the clergyman or the, la or the laity, for that matter. Um, you have to have a calling. This is a, a chosen profession. This is like a, you know, we're like specialists, if you will. You know, um, you know if, if you go to yeah. a physician and you have a, you, you have a problem with your, you have a skin disease, you go see a dermatologist. You know, um, you, you have a dental problem, you see a dentist, you know, um, you have a problem with uh, the demonics, you want to go see an exorcist who is, uh, who has gone through some training, who has been, yep. uh, who's had on-the-job training, and who's been doing this for some time, because you need a, uh, a seasonal um, veteran to do this type of, of, of ministry. And we have That's a lot of clergy in our order that are learning, <clears throat> and, and, as, and as they learn, they're training their priests, especially our bishops, they're training their priests as to, yeah. you know, how to do, uh, what to look for, and how to actually follow a, um, follow a, a, a certain protocol. Just because a person says that they're possessed by a demon, that does not mean that they are. I'll tell you why. Yeah. The demon would not want you to know. The demon right. wants to hide in that individual. He would not, he would not make, make, make their presence known. Uh, yeah. What would happen is normally it's a family member who contacts us and tells us that their child, their husband, their daughter uh, is, is experiencing certain symptoms of possession. Now, that's yeah. the way it would normally work. If a person is possessed by a demon, he's not going to tell you, I'm possessed by a demon, I need your help. It doesn't work that way. The <laughs> demon would not reveal himself in that fashion. The demon wants to stay there. Well, why would he reveal himself? Right. Yeah, true, true, true. But there are signs and symptoms um, when it's in the oppression stage. Yes, yes. Well, well, when you're when you're going through oppression, the process is a complete mental wear down, uh, yeah. and so so it comes from mild to severe uh, forms of, of of Satan's influence, and that yeah. person can um, become mildly maybe start pulling. Uh, his or her hair, hair out a strand at a time at uh, the mild state okay of oppression yeah. maybe that person yeah. will start you know um start uh maybe uh scratching their uh, their arm and uh, you know and then just a light scratch and then scratch it and then continue to scratch it until there's a scab and then scratch the scab off and continue to uh, to do that uh and then at this point they're pulling their hair out by 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 the roots by, by the handfuls if you will Okay, um, then the self-mutilation will escalate. Maybe they'll take sharp objects and they'll start uh, piercing them themselves, uh, yeah. lacerating themselves. And it gets, it gets extremely uh, worse. As time goes on, the oppression becomes more severe, more severe, up to a point 
where the person, if the person is not driven to suicide, the person may become totally possessed by the demonic entity, and the demonic entity's personality will surface, and then it will start manifesting. Then, yeah. hopefully, yeah. they would have a family member who could contact us, and uh, we would be able to uh, to minister to that person. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually had a, had a case um, recently where it actually, it actually cleared itself up. Well, I actually think it's going to come back, but actually in, in, in this case, the kids were actually drawing crosses all around the room. And when I when I asked them why are you drawing why are you drawing crosses all over the wall, the kids said because we need them. <laughs> mm. wow. I have to say that, that that reaction actually scared, scared me a little bit when I heard that because I started thinking for kids to be saying this, what's in this house? All right, that is scary. Children, children are very open and they could see things that we cannot. They could yeah. sense things. That we are, we, that we used to at when we were their age, but as we yeah. grow and go through the progression of life, the one of our senses are are are, are numbed, if you will. Children, uh, you know, from an very early age up to like maybe eleven or twelve, they could see things, feel things, and experience things that we cannot see or experience, yeah. unless you're hypersensitive, and that's another uh, scenario. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. All right, Archbishop, I want to thank you so much for coming on tonight. Um, oh, would you like to just let everybody know um, where they can get a hold of you? Yes, they have to have a laptop computer with a flash drive in order to see our website. Um, our website is www.ghostterminators.com. Or they could just uh, go in the search engine and just uh, type in Order of Exorcist. Okay. Or they could just type my name in somewhere in the search engine, and, and you'll, you'll get to our website. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or uh, we'll find you, because you're, you're fairly uh, fairly prominent on Facebook, too. Yes, 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 uh, all, all over Facebook. <laughs> uh, as I said, this is like... We we've been out of the closet, if you will, uh, for the past three years. We've been yep. um, on on you know uh, social media. We've been letting people know that we're available in the event that they should need our services. And of course, yep. no cost. We do not charge a thing. We're a nonprofit organization, 501c3 organization. We do not charge a penny. Anyone who is in need can contact us by using uh, going to our website and using the contact page and give us as much information as possible. Very important, we need to have the city, the state, and the country are in. And if they do that and give us a direct, uh, uh, just a, like a kind of a mini letter requesting our services, we will uh, take it from there. And because we get so many requests, um, you know, don't get disappointed if we don't contact you immediately, but we will. We contact everyone. And again, our website is www.ghostterminators.com. All right. Well, once again, thank you so much for coming on. It's been really, really enlightening, and um, it is kind of a, it is kind of a frightening deal um, that that these demons are around. And I mean, it's. It's even scarier we live when in a you very realize. scary world, I hate to say. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, this it's, is a it's, very it's, scary it's, world. Things that they're using to hide themselves that are actually really, really scary. Mm-hmm. Very scary. I find that I, I find that very freaky. But um, and yeah, I'm saying, but um, I'm, I think I'm right in saying that there's actually a rise in demonic activity around the world as we speak and um, I guess that's even scarier in itself yes well it was it was my pleasure to come on and uh, uh, God bless all of you and every listener every person who's listening to my voice I, I pray that everyone has a wonderful and, and whole life <laughs> thank you thank you so much uh, okay. okay take care now yeah. you too thanks very much Okay, bye-bye. Oh, bye-bye. Oh, 
Well, Taryn, that was uh, that, that was an amazing interview. Um, it's uh, amazing what it's amazing what these what um, everyone in the order goes through in these investigations that they conduct, and um, I think I'm, I'm hoping, if nothing else, this interview um, can open people's minds up a bit more to the presence of the demonic. Um, Absolutely, because they're very they're very real things. And and maybe for all all of us paranormal investigators out there, we can uh, be a little more careful and uh, try to protect ourselves a little more while we're out doing yeah, what we yeah, do. Yeah, especially when you're hearing stories of paranormal investigators that were found hanging um, from a roof that there's no way they could have reached. But, um, Absolutely, that scary stuff right uh, there. It's scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, that's it for another week, and I hope everybody can uh, tune in next week. We've got um, Brett Oldham and um, Andy Colvin coming on. They're both um, they're both authors, um, and should be another amazing show next week. So I hope everyone can tune in. Taryn, I'm so glad everything worked out with the phones tonight. You. Um, me too, me too. Have a full show Another, out of the way. We're uh, we're we're, we're on a roll. Absolutely, I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> well, good stuff, and um, that's it for another week. Thanks, everybody. Tune in next week uh, on Beyond Paranormal Radio. Good night. Good night. Ha, ha, ha.